Hello, and welcome back to the ICU doc. This is Tamaris Baronos, and here's another lecture on perioperative and critical care transthoracic echo. In today's presentation, we will talk about the TAPSI, or tricuspid analog plane systolic excursion, how to acquire the view, and how to make measurements. Let's first define TAPSI. TAPSI is a method to measure the distance of systolic excursion of the right ventricular annular segment along its longitudinal plane. If the annulus doesn't move as much towards the apex, that is abnormal. To make measurements, you will need an apical four-chamber view. How to get the apical four-chamber view has been described in a previous video, and I'm going to put the link in the description if you wish to refresh your memory. Let's talk about some of the disadvantages of TAPSI. If there is regional wall motion abnormalities, you should not use TAPSI as an indicator of global right ventricular function, just because that segment might give you a false estimate of your right ventricular function. It's also angle dependent, so you need to make sure that you take perpendicular measurements. Let's talk about some of the advantages of TAPSI. TAPSI is less dependent on optimal image quality and a lot of times in transthoracic echo you might not have an optimal image so that's where TAPSI uh, becomes important. Another advantage of TAPSI it's actually a simple method to calculate right ventricular function if there is no regional wall motion abnormalities. Let's talk about how you get the TAPSI measurements. First you will need a good apical four chamber view and then you select M mode on your echo. You place the M mode cursor through the tricuspid annulus, which is right here. So the M mode cursor would come just like that. And you want to measure the amount of longitudinal motion of the annulus at peak systole. So you place the cursor at your diastole, which is right there, and you want to measure it to the peak of systole, which is right there. So what you're really interested in is the distance between systole and diastole, which is this. This table summarizes the normal TAPSI value. Anything less than 16 is abnormal and anything more than 16 is normal. The numbers in the parentheses are the 95% confidence intervals. In this particular patient, we measure the TAPSI to be 2.4 centimeters or 24 millimeters. So that would be more than 16. So that is a normal TAPSI. And this concludes the lecture on TAPSI. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out our website, YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the lectures, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share.